today I am in the 2018 DS7. Now, PSA Group have had a multitude of different renditions of things going through. When it was originally a brand within Citroen, as in a Citroen DS, DS3, DS5, I thought that they were very good and quite luxury looking cars. But then PSA Group decided that maybe Citroen didn't have quite the right look for them. And so they launched DS as an entirely new brand. And with this, the flagship of DS, the DS7. Now, the DS7 comes at a multitude of different trim levels, starting with elegance, performance, prestige, and then you get to this, which is the ultra prestige, which comes with a host of things as standard, uh, but also costs around £42,000. The only option, the really the only thing you can change is the paint, and this is in cumulus grey. Fuel economy is uh, quite important, and considering one of these will mostly be driven around town, let's be honest, it will see the motorway, but a lot of driving for one of these very likely to be around town so I need to see what this can get when it's around town but in an ideal around town run. Thirty-six point six. Oh, and by the way, I'm now on the back of the car. Not the worst for a big car, especially when you consider it's powered by a 1.6 petrol engine. I was expecting a bit more, and the diesel would definitely return more. But if you are thinking about that whole diesel gate issue and diesels being charged more, and you are set on going for a petrol, then this is your choice, and this is what you will get. So, what is a DS7? The DS7 is a crossover vehicle, so it's a bit of a urban crawler, but also gives you the ability to have some ground clearance underneath if you live in the wilds of uh, let's say the Surrey countryside. So this doesn't actually come with a proper four-wheel drive system, it is a two-wheel drive, but you do have two engine variants. You have a 225 brake horsepower petrol engine and a 180 brake horsepower diesel engine. Now of the two I would recommend the diesel over the petrol if you want fuel economy. But if you want a bit of performance and the petrol with 225 brake horsepower and 221 pound per foot torque it's going to propel you up to 60 miles an hour in eight seconds which isn't the fastest but for a vehicle of its size with a 1.6 litre turbo engine isn't slow either. Starting with the outside it is a superb looking vehicle. The designers have really outdone themselves in, in the regards of it kind of looks less like a SUV, a traditional SUV, more like a art gallery on the outside, especially with those really cool adaptive lights which uh, have a few extra functions which you wouldn't expect. <laughs> There are triangles everywhere. There are there are very particular lines, and the alloys, the 20 inch alloys, look fantastic. Although I am constantly scared of scratching them on a pothole or a curb, because let's be honest, diamond cut faces of that size, they can get damaged pretty easily. Parking, city driving, all things that you need to consider when buying a bigger car now this has a phenomenal lock it has one of the best locks of any suv i've ever driven it also has a type of surround view system which isn't specifically a surround view camera system but when it comes to parking it does help so i just want to demonstrate how easy this is to fit into even really tight spaces And while this does look like a big vehicle, it really actually isn't all that big on the outside. See, this will quite easily fit into a completely standard parking space without any issues, without any fuffle really. This just gets on with it. Move inside and you are presented by even more ultra design, typically French, beautiful design work. 
Vulcan so design anymore in one sentence if I wanted to. This is a true purpose-built interior, which really shows by how everything just has a perfect place and everything is beautiful. Everything has a unique line. Now, on the inside, you do have a BRM chronograph, little watch that flips up and lets you know that, hey, I'm a little bit more special than the standard version. And hey, can your Audi Q5 do this? You then go to the Focal Electra sound system, which is, well, let's be honest, Focal are a fantastic home brand of audio. And with a little bit of tweaking, I found that this had a very punchy and lovely sound. Great bottom end dynamic. The top end was also very clear without ruining your ears. You then get a digital dashboard, which has a variety of settings which you can choose. I personally like the navigation setting because everything's there without being too in your face, but also isn't too minimal. The infotainment system itself is, well, really, really, really superb. Very easy to use and kind of feels entirely dedicated. It does come with Apple CarPlay and it is very user intuitive. Although at times you sometimes feel like you have to go through a few too many options to get to something that you want. Besides from that, it's great. Equipment test in that this does have more than enough space for your general day to day, but I need a bit more than my general day to day. So I'm taking all the stuff that's in the back of my Jaguar XF. This is a 2013, it's a saloon, it's not an estate. So mine happens to be, it's a big boot. It can take more than most saloons of its size can. Definitely more than a five series, especially when it comes to width. But this has a bit of a weird boot. So I'm not sure if everything's gonna fit in. And I think my base is gonna end up on the rear seat just because there's a lot of ingress because they wanna make the interior look pretty. Quite clear cut, that base is going on the rear seat, not in the boot where I thought it would be, but the thing is, it's got reclining seats, even if you put them up, still doesn't give you quite enough space because there's a lot of ingress from them trying to make it look pretty. And they have made it look nice in the back, but as a result, you've got slightly less space than you'd expect for a vehicle of this size. Everything is within reach that you need, including things like paddle shifters if you want to change down gears, the lane assist control if you need that. Part of the cheaper segment, I guess the only thing that I've seen that's cheaper on the inside of this, was the cruise control and the limiter control, actual control unit. Uh, it doesn't feel quite up to the prestige of the rest of the car, especially given that this is a ultra prestige model. Your rear passengers and your passengers in general will have happy travels in this car. Your front passenger has a massage seat as an option, which is good on that long drive when you just need to unwind a little bit. The rear passengers have control to, well, recline their rear chairs, which is something which I've only really seen reserved to things like Range Rovers. You don't tend to get that in a vehicle around the 40 to 45,000 pound mark. Rear boot space is good and can take everything you need, especially when you have your hands full, it automatically opens for you just as you'd need. So the inside, great place to be with loads of technology including a giant sunroof gig test time and we love a good gig test my gig is 46 miles away I want to see how comfortable I will be what fuel economy I will get and the inbuilt Tom Tom traffic as let me know I already have a minute of delay so I'd better get going Forty one point four miles per gallon, so not super frugal. A fair bit of what they say their uh, extra urban should be on a motorway run, but still not that horrific. It's forty one point four. It's a petrol one point six. While it does have big horsepower, the diesel's got better torque, so the diesel's the one to go for if you want the good fuel economy. If you want cheaper around town, then it is probably going to be the petrol. Maybe performance-wise is where. I guess this is where I think it could do with a 3 litre V6 diesel and a 3 litre V6 petrol, but it's not gonna happen. They're doing this because it's Euro compliant. 225 brake horsepower is quick, but for a vehicle of this size, not quick enough. But equally so, on the motorway, not powerful enough to return good fuel economy. The same goes for the diesel in that it's not quick enough, but the fuel economy will be substantially better. 
fuel economy wise, the best I really saw was about 41 to 42 miles per gallon. Not the written 49, I should be getting fine. Extra urban, you will never see the figures that are written down on this because I don't think this is part of the new real world testing. So I don't think it's achievable. Maybe if you drove at 40 miles an hour, but you are very likely to see 40 to 45 miles per gallon if you're dedicated solely to being just on the motorway and you drive at 65 to 70 miles an hour. But put some weight in it, up it to 70 miles an hour, you're probably not gonna get there. Handling wise, oh, it's a bigger car. You don't expect it to hug into corners like an M3. And to be fair, it does quite a good job for the size of the vehicle. However, I do find the suspension a little bit, shall we say, bouncy at times. So it does this quite a lot. And really to summarize, for 43,000 pounds on the road, you are not gonna find anything close to this in any other manufacturer, unless you look second hand. This has so much technology, prestige, and real pure design to it that no manufacturer can touch this. But the other manufacturers have different drive qualities and they have different engines. So if you want something that's slightly faster, you're gonna to have to look with a competitive vehicle. But that competitive vehicle won't be as nice and beautiful inside as the DS7 Crossback is, because this is simply a refined place to be. And outside, manufacturers are gonna to struggle too, because the DS7 Crossback equally looks fantastic outside. It's a vehicle which suits any lifestyle, but equally can be parked outside Greg's or the V&A Museum. It's gonna fit in wherever you put it. Not to mention the fact that it has one of the best locks of any SUV I have ever driven. I think DS have done a superb job to design this. I feel the engine maybe could do with a bit more probably torque in the petrol and you can definitely push more power out of that diesel unit but they're gonna have to push it up to a two litre but it's not impossible so it's a sterling job by DS for what is a well, art gallery on wheels basically 